the international focus on small island developing states this year, which of course culminates with the UN SID Summit in Samoa, really reminds us that these nations are in fact primarily ocean-based economies and societies. They are custodians of vast ocean spaces that are essential for providing communities with food, employment, biodiversity, carbon sequestration, cultural diversity, and of course much more. So we can therefore n address sustainable development. We cannot address sustainable development and human well-being without giving due consideration to a healthy ocean and coasts. Now I believe that in the 20 years since the Barbados summit, our knowledge of the ocean has really increased tremendously thanks to a number of international programs put in place by, among others, UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, or IOC, such as the Global Ocean Observing System and the Ocean Biogeographic Information System, which is a system that provides a global inventory of all known marine biodiversity on Earth. Now this information has helped SIDS to receive more accurate weather forecasts, which assist in better understanding of climate variability and change, including through early warnings to communities and in supporting the development of coastal and marine management plans. But on the other hand, many gaps still remain. So the challenge I see for SIDS is really how to assist them to strengthen their own scientific capacity in ocean management. And this is something that UNESCO is deeply committed to. In particular, we're committed to this through working uh, with the IOC regional networks covering the Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, and the Pacific regions. And these networks provide regional platforms where SIDS countries can pool their resources, such as oceanographic vessels. They can facilitate this transfer of technology, share data, and overall build regional capacity in ocean science and in ocean and coastal management. Climate change is perhaps the most pressing challenge facing SIDS. This is threatening island livelihoods, resources, cultures, and societies, and even the very existence of low-lying island countries. Now, as a result of rising sea levels, the increasing intrusion of salt water into freshwater aquifers poses significant risks for the food and water security of many island countries. Now, the recently released fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, states with very high confidence that in the context of SIDS, sea level rise is expected to exacerbate inundations, storm surges, erosion, and other coastal hazards. And this will threaten a vital infrastructure, settlements, and facilities that support the livelihood of the island communities. To develop effective adaptation measures, SIDS really need to be able to benefit from sea level monitoring networks such as those that are coordinated through the IOC's Global Ocean Observing System and its regional components. Now, the issue of ocean acidification due to increased carbon dioxide emission already is showing negative consequences for coral reefs, for pelagic fisheries, for aquaculture, and the island communities that depend on them. But there are only very few sustained observations of marine carbon and ecosystem responses to the changes already being experienced. Again, this is an area where UNESCO's IOC has been helping SIDS to expand ocean acidification research, monitoring and observations through increased international collaboration. And we're doing this via, for instance, the Global Ocean Acidification Observing Network, the International Group for Marine Ecological Time Series, and the International Ocean Carbon Coordination Project. The natural science sector is contributing to the SIDS conference through a variety and a wide range of issues and technical fields of expertise. These include freshwater resources, disaster risk reduction, climate change, coastal management, local and indigenous knowledge, biosphere reserves, biodiversity conservation, science policy, and, and a host of others. But this contribution, which does build on previous experience, is intended to be constructive and distinctive, but complementary to the various UN and other entities contributing to the conference. <laughs>